Welcome friends, we will discuss uh, in this lecture about the applications of rotational spectroscopy. In previous lectures, we have uh, discussed about the basic aspects of rotational spectroscopy. Also, we have seen about the moment of inertia and the ro rotational energy levels. Now, we will see about the applications of rotational spectroscopy. In this lecture, we will be discussing about two applications of rotational spectroscopy. First application is determination of Internuclear distances which we also call it as bond length for a diatomic molecule. If it is a diatomic molecule then it will be consisting of a bond length that is if we have a diatomic molecule say A and B then the distance between their nuclei will be the bond length of that particular molecule. So, uh, this rotational spectroscopy can be used for determining the internuclear distances or bond lengths of the molecule. Here we have uh, the rotational energy levels. We have rotational energy levels uh, at the lines in the rotational spectrum can are appearing at 2b, 4b, 6b, 8b and so on. This we have seen it in the last lecture uh, regarding uh, the energy levels in a rotational spectrum. So, the lines are all equidistant when we are looking from uh, transitions from say epsilon uh, from uh, j uh, is equal to 0 to 1 or from epsilon j is equal to 1 to 2 by following the selection rule where we have a selection rule as delta j is equal to plus or minus 1. So, we can have a transition between uh, the immediate upper line or immediate lower level. So, we can have the transition between uh, one higher level or one lower level. So, these uh, transitions will be resulting into absorption spectrum if we are going to a higher level or an emission spectrum if we are coming down the level. So, in both the cases the energy absorbed uh, if we are going from 0 to 1 it will be appearing at a 2b level. So, if it is an absorption spectrum then we will have a line over here at 2b corresponding to 2b then we will have a line corresponding to 4b, then we will have another line corresponding to 6b, then we will have a line corresponding to 8b, we will have a line at 10b, similarly one at a 12b. So, on we will be uh, having these uh, lines peaks in the absorption spectrum. Now, these lines are equidistant over here because this is appearing at 2b from 0. Uh, uh, per centimeter. From, uh, this second line is appearing at 4b, third line is appearing at 6b, then at an 8b, 10b and 12b. So, what we can say is that the difference between the uh, first line and second line is 2b, difference between second line and third line is also 2b. Similarly, this distance is also or uh, difference between the two lines is also corresponding to 2b. So, these all are lines which are appearing equidistant in the rotational spectrum. This fact we can use it for determination of internuclear distances. What we can get it from here is that as the lines are equidistant, so we can have an average separation in a rotational spectrum. Average separation between the lines in a rotational spectrum will be equal to 2b where b is Jerome's constant, b has a value as h upon 8 pi square i into c. So, here we can have it, b we can find it out as average separation divided by 2. So, this will be giving us b value that is Jerome's constant. We have g, uh, b as equal to h upon 8 pi square i c. So, by using this we can get it b is equal to h upon 8 pi square i into c. So, we can determine i from here as i is equal to h upon 8 pi square b into c. If we know the value of b from average separation, we know the value of c as a velocity of light, h as a Planck's constant. So, if we re, uh, place the values of h, c and b from this average separation, we can calculate moment of inertia i. 
we also know that moment of inertia i is equal to mu into r square where mu is reduced mass mu is a reduced mass so we can use this equation to calculate the uh, moment of inertia moment of inertia uh, from the practical we can calculate it experiment we can get it from here by uh, the average separation we can calculate the jerome's constant and replacing uh, placing the value of jerome's constant here we can calculate the moment of inertia we know the moment of inertia equals mu into r square where mu is a reduced mass so it is represented as m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 where m1 and m2 are atomic masses of the uh, atoms involved in a molecule that is in a diatomic molecule if we have it say two molecule uh, two atoms are there atom 1 and atom 2 of masses m1 and m2 these m1 and m2 will be the masses of first and second atoms so we can calculate the reduced mass from here what we have to uh, keep it in mind is that this m1 and m2 are atomic masses so these are the masses of one atoms not the complete uh, gram atomic masses so if you are taking gram atomic masses then we need to divide it by avogadro's number so when we divide it by avogadro's number we get it m1 upon n into m2 upon n divided by m1 plus m2 upon n one of this n gets cancelled we will get m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 whole into 1 upon Avogadro's number this will be giving us the uh, reduced mass so r can be easily found out r will be equal to i upon mu uh, r square is i upon mu therefore r will be equal to square root of i upon reduced mass so this equation can be used to calculate the internuclear distance or bond length of an diatomic molecule then we have second application we have second application as effect of isotopic shift on rotational spectrum effect of isotopic shift on rotational spectrum what are isotopes I isotopes are the ones which are having uh, different masses they will be having same atomic numbers but their mass numbers will be different as their atomic numbers are same so their chemical properties will remain same just they have different mass so they will be differing in mass only so those properties which are dependent on mass will be uh, having difference in when we are uh, replacing one of the atoms by its uh, isotope so when we are replacing one of the atoms with an isotope the properties which are dependent on mass of the atom will be changing uh, now uh, in the rotational spectrum we have seen that i moment of inertia is mu r square where mu is reduced mass given as m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 into 1 upon Avogadro's number so this mass if we are changing one of the masses of the uh, one atom by an isotope so this uh, reduced mass will change as the reduced mass changes moment of inertia will also change similarly b we know that b is Jerome's constant given by 8 pi square i into c as i is changing so does the Jerome's constant so Jerome's constant will also change now when we are looking at if the Jerome's constant is changing we have seen that in a rotational spectrum lines are appearing somewhat like this now these lines are appearing at difference of 2b so these lines are separated by a difference of 2b now if the b is changing so this lines appearance will also change these lines will get shifted either in this direction or in this direction depending on what is the effect of mass if the mass is increased 
as the i is in your denominator if the mass increases b value will become smaller and if mass decreases b value will increase so as the b increases there will be greater separation here if the b decreases there will be smaller separation here so the uh, spectrum will either contract or spectrum will in increase so uh, spectrum will in uh, either we will get enhanced or will get contracted or uh, expanded or contracted uh, so when we are replacing one of the atoms with its isotope there will be effect on the rotational spectrum this effect can be easily known as we know that the masses if we are changing so does the mu will change as mu is proportional to i so i is directly proportional to mu and we know that b that is jerome's constant is inversely proportional to i in this uh, equation b uh, i is in the denominator so b, uh, b is inversely proportional to moment of inertia and moment of inertia is directly proportional to mu so b will be inversely proportional to reduced mass hence if we have two uh, molecules uh, with uh, one isotope as a and another isotope as b then the jerome's constant of atom uh, of uh, one isotope as a upon jerome's constant of its isotope will be equal to reduced mass of b upon reduced mass of a as these are inversely proportional so uh, if uh, isotope a is jerome's constant is on the numerator side its uh, reduced mass will be in the denominator and so does the other thing other way uh, so here b of a upon b of b will be equal to mu of b upon mu of a so this way we can easily correlate the reduced masses with the jerome's constant from this uh, the effect of this can be easily seen in the rotational spectrum here we are plotting the rotational uh, energy levels for carbon monoxide where the carbon in one of the atoms carbon is in normal c12 while in the other we are replacing one of the uh, we are replacing the carbon with its isotope c13 so here in the left hand side we have a spectrum for c12 uh, carbon monoxide and on the right hand side we have a spectrum with c13 carbon monoxide as we know that as the mass increases if the mass is increased then b will decrease as b is inversely proportional to reduced mass so as the mass increases our jerome's constant will decrease and so does the gap in the energy levels will also decrease now as the gap decreases as we can see it over here so when we are looking at the spectrum uh, from j is equal to 0 if we compare it both are at the same levels when we go to the higher level j is equal to 1 there is a slight difference is there the j is equal to 1 for carbon monoxide with c13 is slightly lower in energy than that of the car c12 uh, carbon monoxide that difference increases when we go to uh, j is equal to 2 level further as we go higher and higher the difference goes on increasing so what happens here is that when we are having a transition from j is equal to 0 to 1 that transition will be corresponding in a c12 carbon monoxide we will have a line here in the spectrum will be appearing as a solid black lines that we have drawn it so for uh, the lines appearing in a normal c12 uh, carbon monoxide are drawn as a solid lines in uh, this rotational spectrum the other one that is for c13 carbon monoxide we are doing it with a dashed lines so as we can see it as uh, the spec uh, the gap here remains constant for 2b differences in each of this but when we are going for a dashed lines that gap uh, the difference here keep on uh, increasing this gap between the spectrum with a normal c12 line and the spectrum with a c13 uh, carbon monoxide the gap is increasing as we go to higher and higher energy levels so as we go to higher level energy levels this gap is increasing here it it is appearing at this level so this will be the gap over here so in this case we have that particular gap is this much as we come down to a lower energy level it is decreasing as we go higher and higher that gap keep on increasing so uh, in this case uh, we can uh, find it out the differences in this energy levels 
for an isotope and for the normal uh, atoms. So from this isotopes and normal atoms, we can calculate uh, this uh, reduced masses and that reduced masses can be used to calculate the atomic masses of the isotopes. This uh, has an application in calculating the atomic masses for the isotopes. Like we have it for reduced mass, uh, we can have Jerome's constant for the normal uh, molecule and Jerome's constant for the isotopic uh, molecule. So for that, we can have it then the reduced masses, we can calculate it for the normal as well as for the isotope. Uh, now, if we know one of the reduced masses, then the second reduced mass can easily be calculated from here. Like all other spectroscopic methods or any other techniques, the rotational spectroscopy also has certain limitations. Uh, we will see those uh, limitations here. In the uh, rotational spectroscopy, we have seen about uh, different aspects of uh, related to rotational spectroscopy. Now we will see about the limitations. There are two major limitations of rotational spectroscopy. One is that it is uh, can be seen only for polar molecules or it can be seen only by the polar molecules or for those molecules which have dipole moment. That is dipole moment is necessary for a molecule uh, to observe in a rotational spectrum. Otherwise, uh, the rotational spectrum will not be observed for that particular molecule if it does not have a dipole moment or uh, when the rotational spectrum is being recorded while rotating the molecule must change its dipole moment either the magnitude or the direction if it is changing the dipole moment then only it will be able to absorb the microwaves and the rotational spectrum will be observed for that those molecules otherwise it will not be observed the second uh, limitation for uh, the rotational spectrum is that the molecules uh, must be in gaseous state if the molecules are in gaseous state, then only the rotational spectrum is observed. In liquid state or in solid state, the rotational spectrum is not observed here. Uh, in the liquids as well as the uh, solid state, there are a lot of intermolecular interactions are there. And because of that interactions, pure rotational spectrum is not possible for them. In gaseous state, these are negligible and hence the uh, rotational, pure rotational spectrum can be observed in gaseous state only. Not